This video illustrates how useful at-risk can be for simulating sporting events. The model is of baseball's World Series, played every year in October. In case you aren't a baseball fan, the only things you need to know are the following. Two teams, referred to here as Team A and Team B, play a best-of-seven series, meaning that the first team to win four games wins the series, and the series is over after a team has won four games. The games are played at alternating stadiums. Actually, the team with first home field advantage is determined by the winner of the All-Star game in July. Let's assume for now that it is Team A. Then the first two games are played at Team A stadium. The next three games, if a fifth game is necessary, are played at Team B stadium. And the last two games, if they are necessary, are played at Team A stadium. As in all sports, a team would rather play in its own stadium because of a perceived home field advantage. The model shown here is actually set up to run two simulations, one where Team A has first home field advantage and one where Team B has first home field advantage. This is done with a risk sim table function and an if function. Because of this, the number of at-risk simulations is set to two. For now, the model assumes that the two teams are equally good and that each has probability 0.55 of winning in its home stadium. Of course, these probabilities in rows 7 and 8 can be changed to any values you like, but with the current assumption of equally good teams, you would probably expect that the team with first home field advantage should have an edge in the series, right? After all, this team will play a potential four games at its home stadium, whereas the other team can play at most three games at its stadium. The simulation will eventually indicate how much of an edge there is. Note that at-risk dice button is currently set to static values. For this model, it is more interesting to change this to random so that you can see how different iterations of the series can play out. The simulation itself is a little tricky because the Excel formulas have to capture two types of logic. First, they have to indicate which team is the home team in each game, and second, they have to indicate when the series is over. Here's how this logic has been implemented. The if functions in column C indicate that the team with initial home field advantage is the home team in games 1, 2, 6, and 7. The other team is then the home team in games 3, 4, and 5. The only random values are the 0, 1 values in column D. Each uses a risk binomial function with one trial and a probability of success looked up from rows 7 and 8. Values are definitely generated for the first four games, but beyond that, they are generated only if the series is continuing. Blanks are entered if the series is already over. This general if logic for games 5 to 7 is used in other columns as well. Columns E and F capture the cumulative number of wins for each team. This is done for team A in column E with nested if functions. Then it is done for team B in column F by using the fact that the two teams' wins must sum to the number of games played. Finally, Column G indicates the status of the series. It is definitely continuing after games 1, 2, and 3. After that, it depends on whether either team has won four games. The first time this happens, column G records finished. After this, it records a blank. I will press the F9 key a few times to illustrate how the World Series might play out. Two cells have been designated as at-risk output cells. In cell C21, the number of games played is the number of non-blank entries in column D. 
In cell C22, team A is the winner if the maximum value in column E is 4. Then a number of at-risk statistical functions can be used to find summary statistics on the length of the series and the winner. Because two simulations are run, one for each possible team with first home field advantage, each statistical function has last argument one or two. Note how the probability that a series has exactly, say, six games is calculated. It is the probability of less than or equal to six minus the probability of less than or equal to five. Just remember that risk target always gives less than or equal to probabilities. Also, remember that these summary statistics aren't meaningful until the simulations are run. Now I will run two simulations, each with 5,000 iterations. Here is the distribution of the number of games played. Of course, this is a discrete distribution with possible values 4, 5, 6, and 7. For the current model, the most likely outcome is a six-game series. Also, because each team has the same home field advantage, this histogram is exactly the same regardless of which team has first home field advantage. The distribution of the second output is also discrete, being either 0 or 1. It indicates that the team with first home field advantage does indeed have an edge in the series, winning a little over 51% of the time. Once this basic model has been developed, you can ask a lot of what-if questions. For example, suppose team A still has probability 0.55 of winning at its stadium, but team B has only a 50-50 chance of winning at its stadium. Running both simulations again shows why Team B really wants the first home field advantage. When Team A has first home field advantage, Team A has a little more than a 54% chance of winning, so Team B has about a 46% chance of winning. But when Team B has first home field advantage, Team A's probability of winning goes down a little bit to about 53%, so Team B's probability of winning goes up a little to about 